Coming up, why I'm going bare bottom with this tank versus sand. So I have never had a bare bottom reef tank, but that is going to change with this new tank. Why? Well, strong flow is very important for SPS since it helps to deliver nutrients. And with this peninsula tank, I think it's going to be a real challenge to keep sand in place. The plan at this point is to have all of my recirculating pumps on the end of the tank. So the pumps will really be cranked up a lot to deliver enough flow across the six foot long tank. In the past, I have resisted a bare bottom since I liked the look of sand in a reef tank. However, nearly all of my sand beds in the past have developed bare spots due to high flow on the tanks, so it has been sort of a pain in the butt to keep refreshing those bare spots. Plus, a lot of debris does accumulate on my sand beds, including shells from dead hermit crabs or snails, broken pieces of coral and other stuff, so I'll admit, I'm a bit of a lazy reefer when it comes to keeping my sand beds clean, so they are typically not that pretty to look at. Another reason why I've favored sand beds in the past is due to my affection for wrasses. Most wrasses require sand, including leopard wrasses, my favorite type of wrasse. But I currently have three leopard wrasses in my 187 gallon tank, so I figured, hey, I can live without them in the new tank. I could just always pivot and look at the 187 when I need my wrasse fix. Down the road, I can always add a RAS that doesn't need a sand bed, such as a fairy or flash RAS, if I get that urge. Here is a third reason why I've favored sand beds in the past. They provide another home for bacteria and act as an additional biological filter for the tank. This is a good thing since the bacteria do the heavy lifting when it comes to removing and recycling excess nutrients as they absorb ammonia and phosphates found in fish and invertebrate waste. However, I'm starting this tank with very porous live rock, which is a great home for bacteria, and I should be able to easily spot and remove detritus without any sand around. As I mentioned in the prior video, I did create some space underneath the aquascape to make it harder for detritus to settle on the bottom of the reef. With strong flow, it should be easier to elevate most of the detritus into the water column and export it via mechanical filtration. I also plan to siphon any additional detritus on the bottom during water changes. Finally, what about old tank syndrome with a sand bed? Was that a factor for me in deciding against a sand bed? Maybe a little. It is not clear in my mind that a tank will eventually go downhill due to an aging sand bed. The thinking with old tank syndrome is that toxic substances such as hydrogen sulfide that lie at the bottom of a sand bed can leach out over time and cause harm to the tank's inhabitants. Is this more likely with a deeper sand bed? The odds might be greater. I have always kept shallow sand beds, so perhaps the chances of this happening to me would be less. Anyway, I'm going to give bare bottom a go. Hey, I can always add sand if I end up not digging the bare bottom look. Well, that will do it for this video. Many thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. One last thing, if you need help with a new tank build, including help designing a custom aquarium, or help reconfiguring your current setup, then feel free to reach out to me. I will put a link in the video description below. And if you are looking to add some equipment, I do sell GHL, Pax Bellum, and Royal Exclusive products, including Dream Boxes, which is the equipment I use and recommend. So again, I will put a link in the video description below. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.